Good evening and welcome to our office of Vespers or evening prayer on this, the Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent. I must say it's been extremely encouraging. Um, we have five masses today to cope with uh, all the people from early in the morning to later in the evening to try and get everybody in, those particularly who work. Even the 7.30 a.m. Mass this morning at St. Pius was full. And the 10 o'clock here was extremely full, uh, fuller than any other time sometimes. And I, you've got uh, 11 o'clock at uh, St. Edward's was also standing room only. And I go off after this uh, evening office of Vespers to take Mass at 7 o'clock in St. Mary's at uh, Rides Hill. And then there's another Mass at 7.30 at St. Edward's in the 1962 Missal. So it's been very encouraging that so many people have spent the time and made the time. It's an important time, of course, Lent. It's not a miserable time. It's a, a solemn time when we prepare for Easter, the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ, but also his resurrection. And Lent is a time of meditation, of pausing to think, taking life a little more slowly, reading the scriptures a little bit more, spending more time in prayer and uh, trying to understand our own sinfulness and to root it out wherever we can. We're all sinners, but we think particularly of our sins during uh, the season of uh, Lent. We also remember those people who are studying and have been studying since last September to become Catholics, people who have no faith at all, who will come into the church and be baptised at uh, Easter time the baptism, the sacrament, which washes away all sin in one go. But also those people, Christians from other denominations who have turned to the Catholic Church. They will be confirmed into the Church at Easter time with those catechumens, those who are, are waiting to be baptised. So it's a great time of preparation and of growth in the Church. The Church is continuing to grow, thank God, in this area of our diocese and of course we all work towards that. Jesus gave us the command to go out to preach to all nations, to baptise them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that's because that gives them their opening, their chance of heaven. We all, the baptised, have a chance of heaven. We can't earn our way there, we get there by the grace of God. But we do depend on him, our loving Father, who is always merciful and ready to forgive us our sins. Of course, Christ's act of sacrificing his own life on the cross broke that barrier down to allow all of us to be um, absolved from our sins. That was a once only, once and once for all, as the hymn says, that sacrifice on Calvary. It's never to be repeated, it doesn't need to be repeated. But we do need to connect into that with our contrition for sins, our determination to do better, and our trust in the Lord, have faith in him. All those things mount up into life, life which goes beyond this life, goes into eternal life. And that's what uh, our faith is all about. Our living on this planet is only just part of it. When we die, it's not uh, f forever, we go through a portal which we call a doorway, which we call death. And out the other side is the continuation of life, but an eternal life. Life is not ended, but it's changed. And so we all of us draw comfort from that when our time comes to die, that it's not the end. We're not blown out like one of our candles. We go on differently, changed into something we don't fully understand, but we have so many pointers towards it that it's life with God. So we go back to the beginning into when Christ came into this world and that was announced by the angel Gabriel. So before we start Vespers, we say the Angelus. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt amongst us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that by the incarnation of the Holy Spirit was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glories of his resurrection. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. The app Universalis um, lines up with the, the breviary this evening. And with our first hymn will be that great Lenten hymn, O God, of thy pity unto us thy children. O God, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. God of thy pity unto us, thy children, Bend down thy ear in thine own loving kindness, and all thy people's prayers and vows ascending. Here we beseech thee. Look down in mercy from thy seat of glory, Pour on our souls the radiance of thy presence. Drive from our weary hearts the shades of darkness, lightening our footsteps. Free us from sin by might of thy great loving. Cleanse thou the sordid, loose the fettered spirit. Spare every sinner, raise with thine own right hand all who are fallen. Glory to God the Father everlasting, glory forever to the soul begotten, with whom thy Holy Spirit through the ages reigneth coequal. How wonderful is this knowledge of yours that you have shown me, Lord. O Lord, you search me and you know me. You know my resting and my rising. You discern my purpose from afar. You mark when I walk or lie down. All my ways are open to you. Before ever a word was on my tongue, you know it, O Lord, through and through. Behind and before you beseech me. Your hand ever laid upon me. Too wonderful for me, this knowledge. Too high, beyond my reach. Oh, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your face? If I climb the heavens, you are there. If I lie in the grave, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn and dwell at the sea's furthest coast, even there your hand would lead me. Your right hand would hold me fast. If I say, let the darkness hide me, and the light around me be night, 
Even darkness is not dark for you, and the night is as clear as the day. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. How wonderful is this knowledge of yours that you have shown me, Lord. I am the Lord who tests the mind and heart. I give each man what his conduct deserves. For it was you who created my being. Knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you for the wonder of my being, for the wonders of all your creation. Already you knew my soul. My body held no secret from you. When I was being fashioned in secret and moulded in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw all my actions. They were all of them written in your book. Every one of my days was decreed before one of them came into being. To me, how mysterious your thoughts, the sum of them not to be numbered. If I count them, they are more than the sand. To finish, I must be eternal like you. O oh, search me, God, and know my heart. O oh, test me and know my thoughts. See that I follow not the wrong paths and lead me in the paths of life eternal. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I am the Lord who tests the mind and heart. I give each man what his conduct deserves. All things were created in him, and he holds all things in being. Let us give thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transformed us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. All things were created in him, and he holds all things in being. Keep on working with fear and trembling to complete your salvation. For God is always at work in you to make you willing and able to obey his own purpose. Do everything without complaining or arguing that you may be innocent and pure as God's perfect children. I said, Lord, have mercy on me, we repeat. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. When you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her lowliness 
henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me, holy his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud-hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his sons forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. When you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. To God be honour and glory. He has sealed the new covenant in the blood of Christ and renews it in the sacrament of the altar. In confidence we pray, Lord, bless your people. Lord, guide nations and their rulers according to your will. May they work for the common good and with one mind and heart. Lord, bless your people. Renew the spirit of service in those who have left all to follow Christ. May the holiness of your church be revealed in their lives. Lord, bless your people. You have made all people in your likeness. Help them to rid the world of every injustice. Lord, bless your people. Come with your truth and friendship to those who have lost their way. Teach us how to help them. Lord, bless your people. Let the dead enter into your glory. Let them praise you forever. Lord, bless your people. from the prayers that you have sent in and asked us to offer on your behalf today. A prayer request from Jan. Please pray for the RCIA group, the people who are studying the Catholic faith, heading to Arundel Cathedral this Saturday to meet the bishop in preparation for being baptised and confirmed at Easter. We also pray for Ian ahead of his scan on Friday. Another prayer request to pray for Rosa Alonghi. Let us also pray for vocations to the priesthood, that the Lord will open the minds and hearts of men to offer their lives in the service of the Lord through the priesthood. Mary asks that we pray for the soul of Eric Anteo, who died this morning. Prayer request from Colette. Please could we pray for the repose of the souls of Judy Neto and her twin sister, Mary. Zelma asked that we pray for Richard Gladstone, who passed away this week, and for his grieving wife and daughter. Let us also pray for those who have recently died, for Father Stephen Ortiger, for Mian Breslin, for Nicole Parker, Francesco Covelli. And among the clergy who have served this diocese and whose anniversary occurs today, 
Father Jerome O'Sullivan. Let us commend to God the souls of all the faithful departed, particularly those of our own loved ones who've gone before us. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Amongst our prayers, we pray for Michael, who's received some sad news today. We join all our prayers in that great prayer that our Saviour Christ gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Support us, Lord, as with the Lenten fast, we begin our Christian warfare, so that in doing battle against the spirit of evil, we may be armed with a weapon of self-denial. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And as we go in peace, we sing the evening anthem to our Blessed Lady. Ave Regina Celorum, Ave Domina Angelorum, Salve Radix, Salve Porta, Ex Que Mundo Lux Ex Orta, Gaude Virgo Gloriosa, Super Omnes Speciosa, Vale, O Vale Decora, Et pro nobis Christum ex ora. Grant that I may praise thee, O sacred virgin. Give me strength against your enemies. <laughs> 